to the Syracuse women's lacrosse coach, and that would be Gary Gate, who makes his debut on the program. Coach, good morning. How are we doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Boy, this man, it looks like a beautiful day. You guys look like you're ready to roll, man. Life's good, right? Life is good. The allergies are a little bit tough right now, but uh, other than that, everything's great. <laughs> Weather's beautiful. It, eyes are a little puffy, but that, that tree pollen gets me every time. All right, so so the North Carolina allergies have kicked in on the Syracuse coach. Is that what we're learning as you get ready for the tournament tomorrow? Oh, it's happening in Syracuse, too. It's just this time of year is tough for me for my, my allergies. But, uh, you yeah. know, it, it allows me to stay a little bit more indoors, watch more film, and get ready. Yeah. Um, before before we get in... Go ahead, Pat. Go ahead, Wes. No, go ahead. Is the tournament environment, Coach, how, how different does this get this time of year for a team that's been as successful as you guys have been over the years? Well... The good thing for us is this is kind of our April. Uh, you know, we play, uh, by the time we're, we're done, we'll probably be 10 games in the month of April, so every three days. And mm. uh, here in the AC tournament, you're playing every other day, and uh, we've kind of prepped for that. So the, the thing is, you don't know who you're playing in advance. It's one of two teams every time, and it, it makes it tough to – to really get ramped up and dialed in, but we're uh, down here in beautiful Durham and we'll spend that a little bit of extra time we have together to do that. Coach, uh, we were really, um, it stunk, quite frankly, to hear the news regarding uh, Megan Carney. Uh, she's been on the show, uh, delightful to talk to, great, great player. Uh, but I'm sure basically is that okay. We don't have Megan. Next person up, we got to go, right? <laughs> that's another thing it's been like that all year this is our fourth player uh impact player that we've lost this year um you know it started with a a, a sophomore and Amory holly who ended up having knee surgery on both both knees and we lost her i think forever uh and she was going to be a huge part of our program and uh so that was the first one and then vanessa constantino Second line midfielder, fifth year that came back for that extra year, preseason, and then Emily Harris Chuck. Most people know about her, preseason player of the year candidate, uh, and we lost her. And then Meg Carney. So it's just something that uh, you just got to learn to roll with the, what happens and make adjustments. And the good thing is we've been deep enough that we've been able to do that. It's interesting, too, that uh, sometimes the characteristic of adversity fuels a team. You sense that since this has happened periodically through this campaign, this is something that might be fueling your group? Uh, you know, it's just such a weird year with COVID um, that, you know, everybody's got weird stuff going on, whether it's how you, mm -hmm. you know, we've had very few team meetings where we all hang out. You know, off the field, we don't spend, you know, the, the normal amount of time with each other. Um, even on the road, we eat the, the meals in your hotel rooms. It's it's definitely, uh, there's adversity for everybody dealing with this. And, and you know, certainly these injuries just galvanize that we got to do what we need to do to have the opportunity to continue to play. And uh, I think we have pretty good buy-in on that. The, the win against BC uh, to close last week has got to be a momentum game for you, though, isn't it? I mean, the, the, both matches were tough, and you knew they would be. Everything in this league's hard. I mean, you know, everybody can play. But, but it seems to me that could be a great catalyst to move you on now to postseason. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think it, it was a great example of what the ACC is all about for, for most Olympic sports. It, it's it's the best conference in the country and in certainly in women's lacrosse it is there's, there's no doubt about that and that you got to show up every day and you know you play two games you split them because both teams are good and you know there's five six teams in this league that can beat anybody so you got to be prepared and you got to try and play your best game every time Gary, when we look at this league as a whole, uh, Mark and I have had the conversation uh, really, I guess, what packed for about the last month that 
it's not a stretch that we could have four women's teams and four men's teams when we get to the national championship set. Is that, I mean, is that a feasible concept in your mind that we could have all ACC on both sides? Well, that that's up to the selection committee, you know, how they want to place us because we have mm. the potential to have, we have eight teams uh, in our, in our league right now and potentially all eight, have been ranked in the top 20 and all eight could make the tournament. Now, how do you, you know, do you have us play each other? So it whittles us down. Do they keep us separated? Mm-hmm. So there's a potential of that. It, it really is up to the selection committee to determine, but you certainly could have that if they, uh, you know, set up the tournament that way, it could definitely happen. Uh, you open with Virginia Tech. Uh, I don't need to remind you about their last match, taking care of their in-state rival, Virginia, uh, and what was a surprise. It just is, a, again, to me, a perfect snapshot of how difficult this league is top to bottom. You really don't even have a chance to come up for air, do you, Coach? No. Uh, <laughs> you finished Saturday. We're back traveling on Monday <laughs> and into the tournament, you know, Wednesday with our first round of games. And, you know, like I said, any any team, any any day in this league could upset anybody, and, and that's exactly what happened with Virginia Tech. So they built some momentum, so they're going to be, you know, hopefully, you know, more confident. They're going to feel a lot better about going into this first round against us. So we just got to make sure we're sharp and we don't look past them. Well, I know you've been fighting adversity all year. I want to ask you about. Syracuse lacrosse because Mark and I have really kind of picked up the uh, the excitement of the sport this year really on the men's and women's side Uh, we've seen the sport grow obviously since the launch of the network and more exposure what's that kind of meant for a guy that has spent your lifetime basically tied to the Syracuse lacrosse program I mean your legacy with 22 and everything else is is well documented and talked about what does the the energy that lacrosse is now getting in the ACC mean to someone who's been around it their entire life? It, it, I think it uh, it's just nice to see. Like, it wasn't until just a few years ago, you know, a lot of us were, you know, trying to get on TV. And it was hard to find a lacrosse game either online or on, on the network. And to have the ACC network come on board and, and – show these games is amazing and not only that but i think any kid in the country now can go on their computer and watch almost any game that's played so for the lacrosse Mm -hmm. fans it's it's just amazing what's happened the last four or five years and you know for me i get to watch as much lacrosse as i want i can go back and (laughs) see highlights where in the past you just heard about it maybe got a clip or two from the news but now uh, you have access to everything, and hopefully that'll keep uh, the game growing. We're really, really excited about it. Gary, is there anything in the men's game that you would like to see incorporated with the women's game? You know, I think we've done, on the women's side, if you watch a game from five years ago, it's so different there's all these whistles and people stop and they, they have to freeze all over the field. And, and I've gone back and watched a couple just to remind myself what it used to be like. And it just so much better for fans now. And that was a goal of ours as, as a group was to make it fan friendly. And um, I know the men have done the same thing. Um, you know, they followed us in with a shot clock, which I think is huge to keep the game going. I remember the men's game for a while. It was about how long could you hold on to the ball before you have to touch your foot inside the the box. And it Mm. seemed silly. (laughs) And then once you were called for stalling, it's how long can you keep it before you lose the ball? So Mm. it it really stopped being about scoring goals and making plays and became about the rules and other things. So, you know, I, I just hope the men continue to, to look at that and let the game be played and, and let the kids have fun and, and make it, keep it exciting to watch. And uh, I'm sure they'll do that. I guess this is where we're obligated to ask about the stick now, aren't we, Pac? I mean, we're yes. kind of talking about it, right? 
Yes. Uh, Gary, we've had, we've had a lot of fun on this show with uh, <laughs> women's lacrosse players in the ACC in regard to when they score a goal, then they have to put the stick on the ground and they measure the cage and uh, they measure the net and wow. that kind of thing, the way the, the sticks. So here, here's my question to you. Uh, we've seen a variety of ways that players drop the stick on the ground. Now, yep. Megan Carney, I like I like Megan's style. She gets excited. Uh, I think this is Emma Ward scoring, and you know she's she puts a stick on the ground, that kind of thing. I got to be honest with you though, Gary. I want to see a young lady score and turn and wield the stick about thirty yards down the field. I really do. I want to see somebody just heave it like a javelin down the field. Uh, I your thoughts seen the on this javelin. rule and where it goes? Yeah. Uh, it's already was on our latest survey to ask if we think we still need it. And I voted to remove it. I was never a fan of it um, because it, it, it seems silly that we got to check. You check them before the game, you check them during the game it, and it, it takes, and it's just the pocket depth and the sticks are so good nowadays yeah. that you're not seeing any goals called back. It's not like it used to be where it was really hard to keep your pocket legal. And, and I've actually teamed up with my brother. I'm in the manufacturing business now. And the sticks are very difficult to make illegal. So, you know, I think the rules are a little outdated and hopefully we'll get some changes and uh, we can move forward with that. Well, but we look forward I, have to see, I have seen a couple players throw the stick 25 yards easy yes Where they don't use the javelin yes. style they use the uh more of a discus style where they just whip it around <laughs> it goes end over end and <laughs> down the field i have well, seen that and i believe they've been reprimanded for it <laughs> oh come, come on. on everybody come loosen on. up the, the, the helicopter <laughs> toss never hurt anybody coach come on now it'll never hurt I anybody just think that's just extra work for the refs to go find it i think Exactly. Yeah. I think that's good planning. You know, assuming those guys can see the stick, right, Coach? Assuming they yeah. can find it, yeah. it's all about eyesight, right? Well, they, their allergies always act up around <laughs> yeah. games. Like <laughs> but we wish you the best. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah. let's go, Lax. Here we go. You got it. All right, you got it, Gary Gate, the head coach of Syracuse's women's lacrosse program. Well, they have really fought injury, and Megan Carney, just the latest. We wish them all the best in Chapel Hill. And, of course, we've got coverage of the ACC's Women's Lacrosse Championship for you right here on ACC Network. Starts tomorrow.